guess what resolution this game's running at? 720p? Think again. 480p? Nope, still too high. It is running at just 240p. That's the setting you avoid on YouTube because it sucks too much to use. Yet here, it results in a surprisingly coherent image, considering it's running at just 427 by 240 pixels, then using the new DLSS Ultra Performance mode to try and stretch that up to full 720p. I think you'll agree it doesn't quite manage it. The result is fuzzy, and worse than that, checkerboarded. Distant stuff like those towers shimmer and fizz, with there not being quite enough information for DLSS to produce a stable image from. But remember, I'm gaming at just 427 by 240 pixels. My frame rates are insane. Upping the resolution to 1080p improves things. Now, DLSS Super Performance Mode is running at 640x360, or roughly the resolution used by some Nintendo 64 games. I think you'll agree, it doesn't pass as proper 1080p, nor does it look like a Nintendo 64 game. But it's crazy to think that it's running on a resolution lower than PC gamers were using in the 90s. Now the game's at 1440p, which DLSS runs at 853 by 480 It's still imperfect, but we're approaching acceptable quality now, albeit with a bit more fuzz and artefacts than normal, and the frame rates will still be stupidly high. Finally, reaching 4K, the game's now running at 1280 by 720 On a 4K screen, I can still tell that it isn't quite 4K, but it's reaching the point where I just don't care. Because in motion, things are now moving about so I can't study the pixels, and if I stop, then the DLSS quickly gathers enough information about the image to fill in the gaps. What I'm using here is the brand new DLSS 2.1 feature known as Ultra Performance Mode, and it's ridiculous. Its official use is to enable 8K gaming, because even the most powerful GeForce 1390 card doesn't have enough raw performance to manage this in modern titles, so instead relies on DLSS Ultra Performance to run the game at 1440p, then to use the magic of upscaling to get it the rest of the way. You might say that's cheating, and I agree it is, but if you can't tell the difference on an 8K screen, so what? Plus, you'll actually be getting playable frame rates, which you might kind of want. I can tell you already, if you're going to game at 8K, DLSS is your only real option right now. To fill you in, DLSS is about rendering a game at a lower resolution, then using clever upscaling trickery to try and return it to the original resolution again. The benefits to this approach are numerous. If sensibly configured, the result can still look better than the native image, and because it's running at a lower resolution, it runs much faster than if DLSS wasn't being used. And on top of that, it applies beautiful anti-aliasing to the image, because why not? So it's kind of like magic. You get better image quality and frame rates when it's enabled. It's redefined how we see resolutions, quite literally blurring the boundaries that used to separate them. And it isn't going away. Current consoles already use smart upscaling to hit 4K resolutions, and the next generation will rely on it more than ever. There are, of course, downsides to upscaling, but they're so vastly outweighed by the benefits that nobody cares. Up until now, DLSS has come in several modes like quality and performance. Quality looks better than native resolution, and performance is roughly on par with it, despite only rendering at one quarter of the resolution. But in this video, I'm using the new ultra performance setting, which goes much, much further still, rendering at just one ninth of the resolution. Even with all of the fancy trickery in the world, surely there's no way it can make nine pixels from just one. There's no way the resulting image can possibly look as good as the native resolution could. And as you've seen already, it doesn't quite manage it. It isn't up to native quality. It ends up looking like a really aggressive form of FXAA, but with noticeable checkerboarding around the edges of things. And you'll want motion blur on to disguise these artifacts, which only get worse when the game's in motion. But still, for the base resolution it's using, it punches well above its weight. If we compare native 720p with 720p DLSS upscale to 4K, you can see how much more information it appears to add to the image. It does come at a bit of a performance penalty, but when it's rendering at such a low resolution in the first place, you'll hardly care. In fact, the higher the frame rate, the faster it can fill in the gaps. So when I'm gaming on a GeForce 3080 at a resolution this low, it takes just a fraction of a second for it to do a reasonable job of imitating a higher resolution than the one it's currently running at. It's only if I capture the first rendered frame, like I have in this example, that you can see how few initial pixels it's got to work with. But moving on just a few frames, you can see how much extra detail it has applied to the image. This isn't magic, but it's the next best thing, using a combination of upscaling, numerous samples from a subpixel level, and motion vectors. What if you don't want DLSS to upscale at all, but simply to act as anti-aliasing? You can do this by getting DLSS to render at your monitor's resolution and then to upscale to something greater. 
and I can tell you now, this looks great, with all of the improvements being condensed down into a really robust anti-aliasing solution. In fact, the anti-aliasing it produces is like, so good, I feel it does away with the need for MSAA or even super sampling almost entirely. This is actually how DLSS was first presented to us, but then by release Nvidia had changed direction, instead of only using DLSS at sub-native resolutions so as to improve performance. But if you have the computing power to spare, this option is available to you, and I really suggest you check it out to see for yourself because it makes you realise the compromises and limitations other methods of anti-aliasing have had in comparison. But it turns out that DLSS isn't free, firstly because the graphics cards that support it cost quite a lot of money, but also because, simply by upscaling the image, the frame rate will drop, or at least it did on my GeForce 3080. 1440p without DLSS ran at 74fps average, but that resolution upscale to 4K dropped it to 64fps, and upscale to 8K dropped it down to just 34fps. If I'm honest, if DLSS is already at native resolution, then no matter what it's upscaling to, the result will be so smooth looking you might as well keep the upscaled resolution to the bare minimum. Don't feel like you're missing out by not upscaling your game all the way up to 8K or something stupid like that. Doing so is simply throwing performance away for no noticeable benefit to the image quality. Perhaps I should have made it clearer earlier on, but this new DLSS mode was never intended to be used at low resolutions. Nvidia doesn't want everybody gaming at 240p being all like, ooh, DLSS makes everything look blocky. But so what? Running at such a low resolution really reveals the workings of the technology, which I think is cool. It's particularly noticeable at this lowest 47x240 resolution. I was going to comment on the compromises you make by gaming at this resolution, but it's more like a list of things to read out. Here I go. There's too much blur and the textures look smeary. The shading and shadows seem to be at a lower resolution and hence lower accuracy. You can spot ugly blocks in hair and skin gets airbrushed to oblivion. And this is just from comparing still images, when in motion even more artefacts come into play. The image stability… well, what image stability? There's a visible halo around the main character where it panics because it doesn't have enough pixels to resolve the edges properly. Thin moving objects fizz and fuzz across the screen, noticeably jumping from pixel to pixel. And even when stood still, there's noticeable shimmering and flickering around the edges of objects. Welcome to the ugly truth behind DLSS. These are the compromises you make by using it. It's just that, up until now, it's used resolutions high enough to hide these problems. And that's just it. By the time you reach sensible resolutions, these problems end up becoming quite unnoticeable and you're simply left with great anti-aliasing and superior performance to simply gaming at native resolution. So it's kind of unfair that I'm using ultra performance DLSS at lower resolutions, where it was just never intended to be used in the first place. DLSS ultra performance lets you game at 8K and punches well above its weight at lower resolutions giving semi-acceptable image quality even as low as 240p. Is there anything else it can do? I'm imagining the Nintendo Switch's successor being able to use this, when in portable mode the Switch currently just drops to a lower resolution because there's not so much power to render stuff. But why not do this and then use Ultra Performance DLSS to bring it up to an acceptable resolution again? And better still, on such a small screen the artefacts will be harder to notice anyway. Another use would be in VR to enable high resolutions and frame rates. Support for VR rolled out along with the Ultra Performance mode, so I expect that it's one of the intended uses for this new setting. In fact, why stop here? Why not have a super super performance setting that renders at just 1 16th the resolution? Sure, it would look like crap, but I'd do a video about it, no questions asked. Why not have a potato mode that upscales from just a single pixel, relying on the past thousand frames to produce an image of some kind from? I'd do a video about that too. As fun as it's been to abuse this feature in ways it was never intended to be used, I might as well end the video by using it properly, that is, to run games at 8K. I've already done a video testing the GeForce 3080 at 8K, spoiler alert, it didn't do so well. But then neither does the 3090, so please stop saying it's because the 3080 has just 10GB of VRAM. 8K is just a crazily difficult thing to power at the moment. But perhaps that will all change now this new DLSS mode has rolled out. Wolfenstein apparently supports it, but I couldn't find it in the option so I skipped that game entirely. Death Stranding refused to run at 8K without DLSS of any sort, and I didn't even bother testing control at 8K without DLSS because you know it's not going to manage it. So here are the benchmark results that I did manage to get. Death Stranding at 8K with DLSS quality setting averaged 40 FPS. Performance averaged 54, and the new ultra performance setting boosted that to 70 FPS on average, which put it well within the realms of smooth, perfect playability. As for control, I tested gameplay only by rushing through the game until I reached the first lift, 
on an average 50 FPS, which makes sense since Nvidia claims the 3090 can average 57 FPS in this game at these settings, so this sounds about right to me. But let's end this video by taking a step back and by realising how silly Ultra Performance DLSS is. It makes sense at 8K resolutions, which itself doesn't make sense at the moment. And while it's interesting to test at lower resolutions, right now there's no need to run these games at these settings with the cards that support this feature. In my opinion, Ultra Performance Settings' most useful purpose for existing right now is probably to enable this video that you've been watching. I like to think it was some weird experiment by somebody at Nvidia who was equally curious about how far DLSS could be pushed… for science. Whoever it was, I commend that person. But the technology itself is ridiculous.